when the seatbelt sign is switched off, you may use larger electronic devices. After a year of bringing you videos about Rome, I've decided to bring you something new. A video about Rome away from Rome. Stick around. As I said, my video today is about Rome away from Rome. More specifically, it's about Diocletian's palace in Split. It took only about 50 minutes to get to Split Airport from Fiumicino, which is not bad at all. However, I was warned that it may take more than that to get to the palace. So I ditched the idea of a taxi or a bus and went for a sea transfer instead. This proved to be a great idea, as it only takes about 20 minutes to reach Split City Center by sea. Best of all, we completely avoided dealing with roads congestion and the trip itself almost felt like a little adventure. My sea taxi dropped me off right at the seafront face of the city center, a minute walk from the spot where I was meeting my guide. The guide was there and to my surprise, we completely matched each other's outfit, item by item. Hey. Hello, how are you? Welcome to Split. My name is Ivica and it's pronounced the same as pizza. So same this pizza? CA is pronounced in Croatian like pizza. Right. So listen, I run this YouTube channel, it's called The Main Rome, and it deals with everything having to do with Rome. And I found out about this, uh, uh, I found out about the palace here. And that's why I'm here. So, uh, where's the palace? Palace is right in front of us. Actually, when you walk around yeah. Split uh, through its uh, city center, you, you are always surrounded with the palace. It starts with that corner tower over there. This structure here is the palace? Yes, All yes. Right. It was built by Roman emperor whose name was Diocletian. Right. He became an emperor in 284 and after 21 years on the throne, he retired. That made him one of very, very few, if not maybe the only one, uh, who uh, died of a natural cause and retired. <laughs> he died in this palace. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what you can see today is our remains of that palace, which is one of the biggest survived imperial palace in the whole former Roman world. I mean, preserved on this scale, but it's also very important because it's still alive. It's not a museum, it's not empty shell, but people live inside there. That those are those houses, those buildings that you can see in front of the uh, in front of the palace, on top of the palace, inside the wall, everywhere around. What do you mean people live there? What do you mean? Uh, people of Split. They live inside Within there. Within the palace? Within the palace. Within the palace. But this southern wall, uh, uh, the one that we see in front of us, was different than other walls uh, of the palace. With uh, arcades going from east to west and there is one important reason ah. he lived just behind that wall. Wow. We can say that he wanted a retirement home with a sea view. Of course, original palace looked much different than, right. than, than this one. And here is the model of what it looked like. That's cool. Yes. So, so where, where are we right now? We are somewhere here. Okay. Somewhere here. Right. Of course, there was a sea in Roman times here where we are standing, but uh, there was some kind of pier right in front of the, of the, of the south wall. Those arches, that, this arcade from east to west, that was, th those were the windows from his residence mm. uh, to the outside wall. Very important, it had four gates, uh, which, uh, and all those four gates uh, exist today. So wow. right in front okay. of us is the southern gate, we call it the bronze gate, silver gate in the east, golden gate in the north, and uh, iron gate in the west. Iron. All right. uh, not because they were made of gold, silver, whatever, okay. but because of the importance of those gates and in some cases, like in the case of the Golden Gate, because of its beauty. Inside, 
was the residence here uh -huh. in the southern part. Ceremonial and religious section of the palace was in the middle. Mm. And in wow. the north, there were compounds like barracks for servants, guards, slaves, whoever lived inside the palace. Soldiers, probably it looks like yeah. soldiers' quarters. It, it, does, it does look like a, like a, like a soldiers' quarter. Mm. Uh, what doesn't exist today is the western wall. That wall does exist, mm. but in some cases, it's inside people's houses, which is which sounds really romantic. Like uh, you are living in a house with a uh, wall great. with a wall which was built 17 centuries ago. Sounds great. Well, let's look at those walls. We will enter now into the basements of the palace. I see. Okay. So, what gate is this one? This is the bronze gate. The bronze. Oh. The bronze gate. Wow. Wow. This is the main hall of those basements. Uh, uh, in the 1950s and 1960s, they, they uh, started a big project of uh, reconstruction of uh -huh. the palace. So those two first columns that we just passed by uh -huh. were original. Those others that we can see in front of us were rebuilt. Yeah, they're different. Just, they're yes, different. they are different. Yeah. There, here is a good example. Right. So this is the old wall. Mm -hmm. This is the original okay. piece. And this is the new one, one of the residents of the palace. The imperial cat. Yes. So what were these for? Uh, basements were built to uh, support what was upstairs. There is about 60 rooms in both wings mm. throughout the structure. And each one of those rooms and halls was exact copy of something else that existed upstairs. Just like today, when you build a house, all the main walls are going to the ground. Okay. Same, same is here. So the, the Romans invented? The Romans invented that, yes. The Romans invented lots of things. Uh, uh, and some of them are visible here. They were genial uh, engineers and architects. So they invented arches, for example. They invented many other things, like across the ceiling uh, uh, and they were using all kinds of material. Those stones, that's a limestone coming uh -huh. from Island Braj, which is the closest one to split. Okay. That was a fortunate for uh, re uh, reconstruction later because conservationists were able, able to use same kind of stone, actually from the from same quarries like Romans did. Also they were using bricks and they were using concrete. Mm. Here, they used it to build, for example, uh, the pier in front of the palace. Mm. It was found when they renovated our uh, promenade, they found remains uh, of a Roman harbor wow. in front of the palace, built of concrete. From the cellars, a 17th century old staircase leads right to the peristyle, an imposing Roman square, the heart of Diocletian's palace. But my guide had different ideas. We instead took a side passage to the back area where few tourists go. It's always amazing to see the difference between medieval construction and Roman. You saw in the basements that everything is very straight yeah. uh, and ordered. But here, if you look, some of those walls are actually leaning to each other. So this was built in medieval times. Right. After Rome, but the Romans built better. Are, are we now within the palace? Right? Now we are within the palace. In the, uh, from the moment we pass through that gate, mm. we, are inside inside. A, we are inside the palace. So what we see right here in front of us, that's the south wall where we started. I get it, okay. Uh, uh, seen from the other side. So everything between us and that wall was the residence. And where are we standing right now was his bathhouse. You know that in Rome, Diocletian's bathhouse was one of the biggest buildings ever built in all ancient Christiano. Rome. Yes, uh, just next to the Stazione Termini. So this is like his what? Like a vacation home? Uh, this was his retirement home. Retirement home. Retirement home. He was very important, although he is not so much mentioned in, in, in history, in later works, because there is one reason. Uh, he was probably the biggest persecutor of Christians ever. He brought four laws against Christianity and uh, many, many, m those early martyrs were executed according to those laws. Although I told you, he was really very important because he ruled for 21 years and that was very rare at that stage ah, of the Roman Empire. What we see here is his mausoleum. 
Mm -hmm. This is where he was buried. We don't know exactly when he died. Sometime between uh, 313 and 316. Mm -hmm. When he died, he was buried in that octagonal structure. But what is important for Split today and for our life today, uh, today it's a cathedral. So now we have that irony. Somebody who actually killed so many Christian martyrs, his burial place is now a church. It's still active and being built in the fourth century, that church is probably one of the oldest, if not the oldest building still serving as a church. Of course, early Christians took out his body, took out his sarcophagus. Uh, nobody knows where it, where it ended up. And now, now it's a church. Now we'll come to that other part of the, of the cathedral. Those columns here were creating like a promenade going around, like a corridor, because it was connected with the roof to the main structure. Oh, I see. Take a look on those, take a look on those columns. I mean, they are all different, uh, made of different kind of stone, like a granite, marble, limestone. It's clear sign of Roman wish to show off, you know, like uh, to show, okay, this is how big, how important, how great is that yeah, empire. Yeah. The bell tower was built in the 13th century and uh, it was made just like most of the houses built inside uh, the palace mm -hmm. of the of a material they found on site. But I tell you what, that's what the Romans do, okay? They okay, yes, yes, of course, the of course, of course. The whole history is a history of destruction and construction. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that's usually like that. This bell tower is the tallest one in Dalmatia and it was finished in early 20th century. Mm. There is interesting piece of uh, trivia. The whole palace, everything you see, uh, was built in just eight years in Roman times. Mm. This bell tower, it took 28 years to build it in turn from 19th to, to 20th century. About the Sphinx, I mean, this is not the only one that we have here. Right? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's one of who knows how many that were here in Roman times, in the Ancient times. He brought them here to be guardians of his palace, to be a decoration for his palace. All of them were found by accident. This one was found in some courtyard somewhere there. Uh, but this is the oldest object in town today. This piece is about 3,600 years old. It's original, it's not a replica. And it has one really interesting, uh, another fun fact. I mean, uh, this square is known for uh, opera performances, including Aida. As we all know, Aida exactly. happens in Egypt. Yeah. So they use 36 year old uh, stage prop as part of the stage. For that. The palace itself is an interesting cross between the luxury villa and the fortress. And the peristyle is perhaps its most beautiful part. So now we can leave Paris still. We will go to one of two main streets of the palace. Okay. It's called Cardo. It was going from the residence to the north, to the Golden Gate. Even today, that one and another one going east-west, the Cumanus, are still the most important communication routes inside, inside the palace. So let's see, we'll just pass by those uh, soldiers and uh, we will go to Cardo and toward right. the, the Golden Gate. Dangerous? <laughs> no, oh. no, they're not. They look dangerous. <laughs> Depending on the tip. So, are you, are you telling me we are in the old Roman street? Right yes, now? yes. It was much wider, of course. Uh, it was oh. as wide. It was as wide as that square is. Nice. Uh, right. and, but later in history, those buildings were built. Otherwise, we would be able to see the Golden Gate, the Northern Gate of the palace, right okay. from here. Everybody walking through split. At one point, they have to pass through here. It's good to know uh, all, all the shortcuts, you know, because when it's too crowded, then, then you can uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bypass it. Basically, if I understand right what you're saying, none of this stuff is Roman, right? No, no. Okay. In, in so this, this was built later. Exactly. It was built later, except for some details uh -huh. that you can see on buildings. Because people who were, who were building those houses, they would find different things. That's why when you walk around Split, you have to look in all directions. That's the best way to, to experience <laughs> yeah. all those layers of history. Yeah, that's a great yes. Thing. Look at this piece. I mean, it's probably part of some decoration of some, of some other building uh -huh. that, that existed here in Roman times. Now it's just a corner sign, you know, like. What's that? It's a chocolate store. Hello. Hi, welcome. 
Thank you. Chocolate. Ooh. Oh boy, there's a lot of chocolate here. So, listen, what's your favorite? Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to decide, but it's a tie between the olive oil truffle and these ones here, which are dried figs and whole almonds. Ooh. All right. I tell you what, let me taste both. Sure. Thank you. Olive oil, right? Exactly. Yes. All right. Mm. It's great. You can't really taste olive oil. It's just creamy, right? Exactly. Yes. Mm. It's lovely. Man. What? What's that? That's the giant chocolate we made. The giant chocolate? But where is this? Is this? This is yeah. a place down the street, right? Yeah, exactly. Holy cow! Right from the get-go, you get a feeling that this city is a bit quirky in its own way, but this was beyond any expectation. These guys actually covered the entire Roman square with chocolate and ended up in the Guinness Book of World Records. And we are getting closer to the Golden Gate. So, from the moment we entered the palace through the Bronze Gate, it was possible to come here without turning. Uh, that's beauty of Roman architecture. Why Golden Gate is so important to be named Golden? Mm -hmm. uh, because it was the end of Cardo, the Roman street, going from the, from the residence northbound, and here was the beginning of a Roman road that would take you to Salona. Even today, when you cross that little park on the other uh -huh. side, just outside, when you cross that park, there is a road that would take you straight to Salona. Are we talking about two Roman cities here? Yes, Next yes. But, well, palace was not a city. There was some settlement before the palace uh, here. We don't know how big and who lived, how many people lived here. Mm -hmm. Also, before Romans, there were Greeks. What was important settlement here was Salona. That was the capital of Roman province Dalmatia. At its peak, sometime in the second or third century, it had about 50,000 people. Just to compare, split reach that size, not before 1950s. Okay, I think I get it. So Salona is the Roman city. Yes. And today, split was like uh, uh, his weekend home or reti retirement. A retirement home. He was born actually very close to Salona. He was born in very, very ordinary family. I mean, uh -huh. his father wasn't anything noble. He was just a farmer, maybe even a freed slave. But uh, the young Diocletian, who wasn't even Roman, he was uh, Illyrian, those are the uh, uh, indigenous nation uh, that, that, uh, that lived here. Uh, he joined the army and he started to climb up the hierarchy. Eventually, he became commander of Imperial Guard. When previous emperor was killed, which was usual in Rome, his soldiers voted him a new ruler. So we are passing like now like emperors. This is another reason why it's called Golden Gate. It's really the most beautiful of all it four is. of them. What you can see here is the whole northern wall of the palace in its full okay. size. You, now you can see how it's different from the southern wall, which we saw at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. there is one similarity, those windows, they they are uh, people's homes. They are some. You mean that? Uh, some, yes. Some, of some, the there, right? some local people's homes. Uh, the Euclidean Palace and Split City Center are part of the UNESCO World Heritage List. There are two main reasons for the Euclidean Palace to be on that list. One, as I said, this is one of the biggest and one of the best preserved Roman palaces anywhere in the former Roman world. The second reason, almost equally important, are all those layers of history, of architecture, of uh, traditions, of uh, influences mm -hmm. that you can see everywhere around. And of course, the people are still inside there. That's, and, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. We, like, we would like to, to, to keep it that way. Uh, there are some side effects of tourism which send people away, but a lot of people still live inside the palace. They have their businesses, they have their homes, uh, and they're trying to cope with all the crowd. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, now we left the palace. We left the palace. Listen, I'm, I'm getting a bit hungry. Uh, got anything to recommend? 
lots of things, but most of ours uh, uh, actually eat at home. Uh, so right. we don't use uh, restaurants so very, very much. Uh, right. But I know somebody who will uh, tell you everything uh, you should know okay. where to go, what to eat, and what to drink, especially. Sounds great. Uh, so this was a great pleasure. Thanks me a too. Lot. Me too. Nice to I meet you. Enjoy the tour. And come yeah. back. I will. I will. Enjoy your stay. Ivica, my Eric Clapton lookalike guide, put me in touch with the local food and wine guru, Igor. Igor and I agreed to meet shortly by the huge statue of the famous bishop right outside the palace and discuss some lunch ideas on the spot. Hey, Hello, but that's a topic you? for All a separate right. video. Yeah,